So I'm Mark Carlson. I work for Toshiba and I co-chair the SNEA Technical Council. And I'm going to give you a brief overview of the SDC. Um, began in the late 90s as a SIFS conference. I know Steve will say, don't say SIFS! <laughs> <laughs> but we did. We did in the 90s anyway. Um, so then SNEA started hosting this, the SIFS conference. Um, uh, getting sponsorships and speakers and so forth. Uh, and in 2005, we created the actual Storage Developer Conference brand, and we co-located slash merged uh, with the SIF conference. Uh, and uh, it, it could be 2005, 2006, you know, details are fuzzy. Um, we, we have more plug fests than just the SIFS plug fest now, just the SMB plug fest now. Um, but they're uh, NDA, so people can bring their boxes in, they can interoperate over Swordfish or CDMI or SMB, and uh, we feel that brings the developers to the conference more than anything else, because they can get their hands on it, they can start testing their own Product products, and as a result, our standards are improved as well because we find that different people interpret the specification wording slightly differently. But when they put it in their products, that's the proof of the pudding when they don't interoperate. And it's pretty clear that they interpret it differently. And so we may go back to the standard and, and make it clearer that this is the interpretation. So what about Storage Developer Conference makes it unique, right? We think it's the only conference created by developers for developers in case of storage developers, right? Um, we do, we spend months pouring over all the submissions with the, the technical council. And we only accept about, at least this year, we only accepted about 48% of the submissions. So, I mean, this is an excellent position to be in because we have all this really good content that we can put in front of our attendees, right? The uh, people that don't get accepted, uh, try again next year. Part of it is, can I craft an abstract that sounds interesting and compelling and, and technical enough, right? But we also look at their bio. Is this a marketing guy? Is it, you know, if we don't know him, what are we judging by? His bio, his title? And uh, so we're looking at all the aspects of these presentations so that we don't get somebody up on stage that gets a very low rating. If we have repeat speakers, we have data. We have ratings from previous conferences that we can use to decide whether they're a good speaker and should be in this year's conference. So we think we feel the need for technical content on these evolving trends and technologies. If we have some emerging technology that's missing, we'll go out and find people and drag them in <laughs> and make them talk. <laughs> Sometimes by dangling the main stage slot over their heads, right? So it's not just the sessions, though. Um, there's networking opportunities at these plug fests, at our evening birds of feather sessions, and of course the infamous hallway track where a lot of stuff actually gets done. So these are some of the technologies that we covered this year. And it changes, the, the mix changes every year because you know, certain things will be emerging or maybe it's just a buzzword and we want somebody to, to talk about it and clarify it and maybe separate the FUD from what's actually happening at a te technical level. So some of the hot topics of course are always the solid state storage, the non-volatile memory, persistent memory, NVDIMMs. We have a solid state storage initiative that does a persistent memory summit every year in January. And so we can actually see some of these guys talk at multiple times during the year. So what are the hot sessions this year? We already have data on the attendance of some of our talks. 
So these, these talks have been attended by at least 100 people this week, right? Some of them are main stage. And that's how they got to 100. <laughs> So, how can you, as delegates, help SNEA, right? You could present at SDC next year. You could submit a proposal, and we'd look at your bio, we'd look at your title, we'd look at your abstract, right? And you may be able to get on. Help us find these guys that are, that are at the forefront of technology, because you guys are getting presented to all the time about new technologies, right? So tell us. You know, tell us that, oh, so-and-so is a great speaker. He really knows his material. And this is a new technology that's coming out. Let's get him up there for next year. Um, of course, <coughs> spread the word. Blog, tweet, whatever you guys are here for. Questions? You guys are old hands. I'll Go ahead. <clears throat> what sort of topics do you wish you had that you don't get much of or any of? What's what's missing? Uh, what's what's sort of the holy grail for a, an SDC talk? Well, <clears throat> let's say between now and next year, uh, or next, say spring, when we're starting to put all this stuff together, a new technology emerges that you know multiple vendors are talking about. Um, it might be a key value interface for an NVMe drive, uh, which is, you know, under vote right now at the NVMe Express organization, whether they're going to do that or not. But if they decide to do it, then there'll be a bunch of progress on it over the next six months that then we can go out and recruit some experts for talking about key value over NVMe, for example. Okay? But we, the, we just keep our eyes open. And we're asking you to keep your eyes open and, and help us out. What about talks? What about what? What about talks that deal with tools to help you with sort of development or new research? Yeah, that, that's great. I mean, <clears throat> if we can, we can target storage developers, right? That would be great. I mean, we, we get a lot of talks, proposals on sort of best practices for, for development in general. We have to weigh those as far as how appropriate are those for the developers that show up here. And so we do some surveys. There's a survey that came out yesterday about what programming language to use, what operating system to use, right? What kind of app are you developing? So we're gathering data on our audience as well to, to understand what topics best fit that demographic. It's clear that uh, you know the various tech layers, right? We're getting more and more API driven, so developers are becoming more and more important. Yet, there's also a trend of you know AI and 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 uh, uh, expert systems that that take more less that take the nerd knobs away from the from the nerds, right? Uh, in the at the at the end user sta sure. stage. Over the years, are you finding how are you finding these trends? In other words, are is uh, the things that are relevant to storage developers more or less relevant to to uh, storage administrators uh, over the years? Has it gotten? Have we got? You know, are the APIs? Uh, I don't know. I'm just kind of curious. Is it is it diverging or converging? It, it's early days. I, I would say uh, we've had the SMIS interface for a long time, and there's a bunch of management software written above that, uh, and that has been the basis for most automation today in the storage management world. However, we're transitioning over to Swordfish, Redfish, IP-based drive management, and this is sort of a new foundation for this automation software that the administrators are going to create on top. Um, so we think it's a very solid foundation for them to do their own innovations in artificial intelligence or whatever they want to do, right? But if you, if you don't have that very strong foundation, you're talking to multiple APIs instead of a single API.